Welcome back to another episode of Real Chumps, where chatting about movies feels like hanging out with friends. I'm your host, Marcel, and with me as all and I'm your host, Marcel, and with me as always is my co-host, Danny. This week we are continuing our view- viewing of our favorite movies from a decade ago with the Doug Lyman's Edge of Tomorrow, written by Christopher McQuarrie, Jess and John Butterworth, starring Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt, Bill Paxton, and J-Squad. J-Squad. Um, in this episode, we discuss how many years Major Cage was caught in that time loop, why this movie is a truly a hidden gem, and our theories on why it didn't do great in the box office. Uh, but before we roll that intro, be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Join in on that conversation by following us on YouTube where we release a whole bunch of other content at Real Chumps. We also wanted to let you know that I was a guest host on the Underrated Movie Podcast with Derek McDuff last week, where we discussed the Chris Hemsworth movie, Black Hat. So when you're done with this episode, be sure to check out this one out by following the link in the show notes or by heading over there wherever you get your podcast. With that out of the way, let's roll that intro. All right, Marcel. This is one that I'm really pumped to watch. But before we get started, you know how it goes. We have a question of the day. If you're on D-Day and you had to be in uh, Tom Cruise's scenario, what is your excuse to try to get out? My first time or like now that I've been doing this like a hundred times and I want out? First time. I think I would also follow the same plan. Okay, wait, wait, wait. (laughs) Question. Get out of it with like the general or once I've been taste and I'm in Heathrow. <laughs> it's true. Um, with the general. Um, I I would not try to blackmail someone. Um, I think I would just be like, yeah, sure. I'll go. But I'm going to like sit like I'm just going to be like in the background. Let the because he was the idea was that he was going to be there with like a bunch of uh a video crew and like being in the front lines right um Blue, so yeah i would just be like yeah sure uh yeah i, I guess I, I guess i'm not a pushover but i'd just be like yeah sure i'll go but um i'm not a pushover I'm, yeah no worries. but i'm not gonna take the kind of footage that you are hoping i take <laughs> i'm probably just gonna be like way far away uh taking footage i will have no f- <laughs> i would be like sure and I am my own crew, and my crew is in uh, Boston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they'll uh, they'll try to fly them all out. Um, here's another question for you: How many years do you think he did this for? How many years? Yeah, like I think this must have been like he was reliving the same day for years. Oh, interesting. I didn't. I guess I. I kind of assumed that he was at least. He 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 like a half a year. No way, dude. Dude, c- come. Wow. No, you're right. You're no, right. Because like, he would have had. Because like he was training, and then he like they tried to do it, and then they had to like you're easily. E- well, I mean, th- I two years. Nah, dude. So he he dude, didn't a even lot have, happens in two years. Yeah, but he didn't even have like basic like training. For this, so like just to like get basic training. So I don't know. Someone, someone's listening right now. Like basic training for the army right now is what a year of, of like basic training. I think it's like six months. Okay, fine. Let's go. You keep talking. I'm gonna look this up. <laughs> let's, okay, let's. I'm gonna say it's like a year basic training, um, and then for him to actually like get used to the did you find it i found it what it's 10 weeks jeez man. this is this is why the army is like rebranding itself right now because that's not enough time basic training is 10 weeks uh in 10 weeks you are trained and shipped out to fight for america okay so they have you're ready to start becoming Becoming in 10 weeks, you'll be physically and mentally stronger than you've ever been and ready to join the team that protects America. Most recruits are curious about basic combat training. What is it like? But this is from the Utah Army National Guard. It's a website. Uh, there's So this is National Guard. Yeah. So for basic training for the Army, is for yellow phase, t- two weeks is what it says. It says... 
Okay, so basic combat training, also known as boot camp. Uh, doesn't doesn't give me a, a big... A, yeah, okay, so yellow phase is one to two weeks. Then three to four weeks is the red phase. And then white phase is five to seven weeks. Blue phase is eight to ten weeks. There's a whole bunch of description what that, that is. Uh, so you have a total of... If these are all like after one another, right? Mm-hmm. Like let's just say twenty three weeks. So that's six months, give or take. Six months. <clears throat> okay, for basic training, fine. But then to like learn how to use the jackets. Yeah. Okay. That in the way that he ends up using it, like doing all these flips and whatnot, that's gonna take a couple of years to master that. That'd be insane. To think about, it. I didn't even think about that. I figured he was like a year at like you know roughly i'm thinking like realistically and 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 okay so just master training and the use of yellow jackets but then to like count steps and like know when a missile's going in front of you or a mimic is attacking you to like count the steps and have that memorized that's gonna take another year man but i mean yes and no i mean i think there's this level of like Okay, so one, first off, <laughs> we're spending way too much time on this no, question, no, I but I love we're, it. We're already in this. Okay, we're, we're, let, we're, welcome to our episode of Edge tomorrow. And if you aren't strapped in, you better be because it's going, it's going fast. <laughs> so, uh, uh, General or uh, Major, what's his act? What's Tom Cruise's Cage? G- Cage, Major Cage. Um, he has his first experience. The next time he wakes up, he like. Is already quoting people. So this man okay, sure. has a level of like memorization that is, I would say, unprecedented. Yeah, but like, but but memorizing <clears throat> what people are saying versus you are being bombarded, attacked, mimics are coming, and you have to like focus on like, okay, one, two, three, four, stop. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, shift right. Shift left, one, two, three, four, point, 10 o'clock. Like, that is what yes, but would like, take years to get at, down. Look, as someone, who, as someone who did marching band, who I had to memorize music, I had to memorize steps, I had to uh, then understand, like, a whole bunch of other stuff. You doing the process on a, like, we would do band camp, right? Uh-huh. Band camp would consist of one week. Okay. In one week, we would have to memorize the entire show. Okay, I was one of those individuals. They called me the human metronome for literally three or four years of my life <laughs> because every year I would memorize all the, the, I would get to a point where I'd memorize the steps ahead of everybody and then I would have all the counts in my head the, and I would count really loud so that everyone knew when to move and when not to move okay. before we introduced music. Once we did music, we had to, the music had to be memorized so we knew and then not only do we have to memorize that, we had to like connect the beats to this into the sequence i'm not saying that he wouldn't it would be as fast as a week what i'm saying is like i think that once you're in a situation like that where you are having to relive a thing heightened in a situation over and over again you would get pretty good at like recognizing like the things that happen now i think what would be harder is having to relive his deaths being shot by uh the angel of Verdun. Good old Emily Blunt's character as uh, Rita. Rita, yeah. I'm just saying, I, I see where you're coming from. Yes. But you weren't being shot at. <laughs> Things weren't being blown up. No one was after you, Danny, in marching band. Like, you didn't have mimics coming left and right. That's, that's like being under that pressure and having to memorize that. And, and, and like, yeah, you died. And then you were like, oh, shoot, was that at step 10 after I shifted right? Which oh, is why I think I don't did know. a phenomenal job. No, then I guess the I, I have to go back into it, right? Like, at least remembering phase three after you shifted right, okay? <laughs> that's going to, you, you're going to have to live, relive that at least like 10 times before you, before you get that down. Okay, so let me, let me ask this. Do you, how, so you, in total, how many you think how many years did he spend reliving the same day? I'd give it at least ten. Ten years. Mm, no, okay, I'll give it like five to seven. Dude, he doesn't age. Right, because he keeps going back to the same spot. Oh, touche. 
Look, the the time travel mechanics in this movie, we're not going to get into it too much because they're kind of whacked out. But like, I just I'm assuming like, yeah, he's not aging because he just goes back to the same spot. Okay, fair enough. I, I ten years feels like a lot. I think no. I mean, Grand, maybe. okay, Groundhog Day. Did you, you you've seen Groundhog Day? Yeah, but it's been a minute. Okay, I think that one was like several decades. <laughs> Someone come at me. Like, I, 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 I get the feeling that he relived the same day for decades. That just seems insane. That's a long freaking time. Which is why he, in, at least in Groundhog Day, he, like, attempted to kill himself several times because he was just done with it. <laughs> That's an interesting perspective. If you know, if you're someone who's, like, on the Reddits and you're, like... I think, done- I, I, think I saw on Reddit that on screen we see him die 26 times. Right. Ish. Um... But, yeah, no, I, he, no. Okay, what do we say? 26 weeks is, is like six months? About six months, yeah. So. Basic training. So, that was based, yeah. So And then it's got to take you, at least, for you to be able to move the way that you move in, in the jackets. Okay, I'll give, I'll a, give it. At least a year. Six years. Six years, okay. Six years. I Reliving think so. the same day. And of course, like, there's got to be a day where you're just like, I can't. <laughs> I need I mean, a he break. Is. He did. Right? He took a break. Yeah. And then went to and got a beer. Yeah. And I didn't work out. Um, it I, never works out, Marcel. It never works out. Right. <laughs> so that's the thing. Like, I think I, I, I say seven years, six years. We're, we're right. We're right there in the same space. Nice. That was a good. That was a good question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mine sucked. <laughs> I, what did you say initially? A couple uh, days? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I yeah. think in the in the book in the novel, um, it does say he it was a hundred and some one hundred and sixteen days total. This is based off a book? Are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't look. It's a it's considered a light novel. Oh. Um, a lit novel? Light novel. What does that mean? What is it? What is it? I, don't, I don't know what a light novel is. Um, so the the it's a graphic novel. Oh, it's called All You Need Is Kill, written by Hiroshi Sakurasaka. Oh, I do remember this now. Yeah, which goes into some of the issues there in pre-production. Um, but yeah, in the in the light novel, um, it, it I think it does say like 116 days that he relived uh, that time. Cool. Well, uh, wait, 116 days that he relived the same day. So that means that's like less than you know, less than a year. Yeah, but that's that's no live action, man. There's no way. And 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 this character was different than the characterization of Cage, whereas Cage is just at least this guy in the novel. He's like a new recruit, so he's gone through basic. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Whereas Cage here is just yeah. PR. Let's just jump into the, the, some of the, the stuff. Okay, Age of Tomorrow is a sci-fi uh, war movie where a PR veteran gets uh, set out to war at uh, a failing battle with alien invasions and ends up getting um, uh, a special power due to the aliens bleeding all over him and encounters the fact uh, an unlikely friendship with the hero of the war and ensues to try to find the winning blow that has him living his life day again and again. So like recap. Perfect. Great stuff. Um, tell me your relationship with this movie. So I didn't watch this in theaters. Okay. I don't, um, <clears throat> this, this movie, uh, so it came out in 2014. Mm-hmm. I remember. I think is is Elysium. Oh, Elysium. Elysium. Yeah, with Did this uh, come out at the same time. Matt Damon, right? Uh, this, so Elysium came out a year prior in 2013, okay. and for some reason, like I have them like mixed for a long time. I had a mix in my mind, so like I didn't watch them. Uh, I didn't watch it, and then I think a couple of years ago, I ended up watching this just for whatever. Fell in love. Instant love. It was, it was unique. It was fun. It was, um, uh, heartfelt. Like there's, there's this like level of like, of between Emily Blunt and Tom, 
um, Cruz's character we'll get into more. There's just a really great chemistry um, that I think I would have loved to see more of. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But overall, I just I I've, I've watched it five times. Yeah. Since then. Yeah. I, uh, I so I, I watched this in theaters. Um, absolutely loved it. I remember how it was. Some people were saying like Groundhog Day meets what's it called Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. I remember someone telling me that. Um, and then and then finally, like, I think I read this, but someone's like, "This is this is if, what would happen if you could like re- like a video game and just like." respawn every time every time you die um and that's really what it is so like that intrigued me um i love this movie it it went through like some pre-production issues it didn't perform well i think let me look up the budget on this um yeah it was it was it was good it was a pretty big budget part of it was because like 178 million and girls were gross worldwide it did 370 million so opening weekend, twenty eight million. So not that not good at all. Um, yeah, twenty that was the number that I had on my head was twenty eight million like opening weekend, which is like abysmal for what it was. But the thing with this this film is that like one, there was like I want to read re- 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 rewrites. rewrites. Thank you. Um and then Doug Lyman is at the helm of this. Yeah. Who just recently did who also had issues with uh Amazon with his most recent film, uh Roadhouse. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. He had, uh, and and prior to this, he had done prior to uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Obviously, he did Mr. and Mrs. Smith. He did uh, the Born Identity. Yeah. Okay, which uh, I think for a lot of people that's their favorite one. Um, I love all three of them, but like this is you. You have a great director who knows how to capture action sequences really well. He does. I actually I, I didn't realize I when i was doing the research i didn't i didn't make the connection that he he directed this i thoroughly enjoyed uh roadhouse uh, i have a review that i need to edit um <laughs> but in any case uh i was happy to, to to make the connection and to know that like i mean the other thing is that like the production like the suits were like 80 pounds yeah yeah and and there's a lot of practical use in in the action sequences in this movie which again as we're looking at movies that came out 10 years ago, like do they hold up from, from the special effects, from the story, from the uh, performances? This one does. This one 100% does. And I think that, that, that use of practical effects, uh, as much as they could, um, really hits well. But at the same time, that third act, when they're in Paris, which is where a lot of the rewriting happened, I always get lost. Like I, It's too dark. Okay, I I think I was watching it last night. I don't remember the first couple of times I watched it being that dark. It, it did feel darker. It's too dark. It, it's kind of messy towards that when they're in Paris, and I'm just kind of I always lose interest for whatever reason. I'm just always like, Ugh. I think part of it is that we we've come out of he doesn't have the he doesn't have the power anymore, and so like it's a whole new day, and we're it's a new it's a, it's the first time they have to like do this whole sequence mm-hmm. <clears throat> and because it's only like a few of them like it it happens really fast yeah yeah um so but kudos to the actor to j squad who show up j squad man uh j squad great stuff between them first 20 minutes are truly some of the some just you you get set up with the the what is happening um and a little bit of the why um, but then we get thrust to Cage and his character, and we we finalize with him getting brought to the general, and him completely um, not wanting to go to to the war to the war. He's supposed to go to the the front lines of in London, not yeah, like, yeah London Heathrow. Heathrow, and he's not having it. Ends up you know trying to 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 run away, and gets. Uh, put it uh, sacked and put into uh, a military base to be part of the front lines. Yeah. This is a time loop movie. Okay. Um, I love when a time loop movie does that base foundation of what we're going to be repeating and seeing over and over again. When they do it so efficiently, they give us the information we need. And then when we go and revisit that in the time loop, 
the little moments that we that get picked out and that we that they call back to the first time that we watched it, right? And I think this one does two things really well. One, the introduction at Heathrow, okay? Get up, maggot. Okay, every time. I <laughs> just love it. <laughs> and he gets kicked and yeah. wake up, maggot. Like, it's so good. Um, and then his interaction with, with Bill Paxton. Ah, oh, Bill Paxton, dude. Oh, I cannot tell you how much I love Bill Paxton. The, uh, his, the things that, okay, hold on. Do I have, do I, did I write quotes for this one? Uh, uh, the, the battlefield is the fiery crucible. <laughs> <laughs> he is so good. The way he delivers, uh, uh, what is it? I'm not an American. I'm from Kansas or Kentucky. What, what is Dude, it? I, yeah. Are you American? No. Um, where are you from? Kansas. <laughs> I just his del- his delivery of lines, um, even that one scene when uh, when he rolls out of formation and gets run over by the Humvee. He's like, "Son, why would you do that?" <laughs> like he's just he is great in this movie. Um, we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to do a couple of Bill Paxton movies now that he's passed. But uh, uh, he's just awesome. Um, but no, you, you have the Heathrow interaction. Uh, as he's walking to J Squad, then the interaction with J Squad, and then we cut to being on the on the drop ship, uh, on the drop plane, and the chaos that happens there. They're caught by surprise, and then now we're on the beach, and I love just the chaos, the the use of the camera, and 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 something. Um, I mean, this is 2014, right? So this is post even like a lot of times action sequences, right? We're very handheld. This is the, this is the era when we're coming out of like the born ultimatums, born supremacies, where like you had no idea what was happening, and we're coming out of that phase. And here, though, it's just because of the the sign of of where we're at, right? You have mimics coming in, explosions happening. The one guy without pants, we landed, and then he gets just. <laughs> squashed like uh i just love all these little nuggets and moments of chaos that when we come back over and over again during the loop it's just a place of familiarity and just oh yeah you, they, they they set up perfect setups that continue to pay off numerous times during during that beach sequence Dude, I couldn't have said it better myself. I think I think what this this film does so amazingly well for a time loop film is that we're intrigued from beginning to end when it comes to the loop, right? And we have phases, right? We I love the introductory phase of him. I mean, the initial run of him coming down and having to deal with J Squad. Yep. And uh, I think one of the you know things like Private Kimmel, what is my view of gambling in the barracks? You just like it, Sergeant Farrell. Nancy, why do I dislike it? It entertains the notion our faults, uh, our fate is in the hands of other than our own. And why is uh, what is my definitive position on the concept of fate? Through the uh, readiness and discipline, we are masters of our fate. You might call this notion ironic, but trust me, you'll come around. I, I wrote down that just that last line: through readiness and discipline, we are masters of our fate. And this is what he comes around to. He comes around. He realizes that through this, through mimicking the day, understanding what happens throughout the thing, he's going to be able to do this. Exactly. He has to discipline himself to repeat the day for seven years, <laughs> I'm saying, uh, and for however how long, and to be ready to anticipate everything that's happening, right? Um, such a such a powerful line, especially for this particular uh, time loop movie. But I think this is what, again, why it, it, this movie is... Because I think there's multiple times throughout this film that we get these little small nuggets that happen that are like just one-line payoffs to bigger em- emotional thematic m- beats throughout the rest of the film. I um, Yeah, it, it, it's really good. And it, I, I, I clocked it this time. So that first act ends with him and Rita uh, meeting... And then um, heading 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 out into to meet the Doctor Carter, right? Correct. And it's just a beautiful first act. This movie, because we we get all the exposition, we understand 
the mechanics, the quote unquote mechanics of this movie of the time loop. We've seen it repeated several times. And now we're introduced to Rita and to Carter and then what the whole purpose is moving forward. It is well-timed because oftentimes um, in time loop movies, because it's happening over and over and over again, you are ready to kind of move on, right? You're ready to for the next phase. How is this individual going to get out? And sometimes it tends to drag. At least that's been my experience. And, and I will say like Groundhog Day, Groundhog Day for me is impacted by that. Um, not that it's a bad movie, but like I get to a point where I'm just like, okay. Yeah, I would and agree it, and with that. it's intentional because we're experiencing it with him, right? But this movie, uh, we don't, I, I never get to the point where I'm like, I'm ready to move on. But that first act ends with introducing Rita or Rita and, and Cage connecting and then the introduction of Carter and now why, what is it, these visions, what is it that we need to move forward, and how do we stop, you know, having this time loop? I think both the first and second act are really great. Yeah. Third act, I think, is also great, but I do think that what you brought up earlier with it being, I don't know, production-wise or some, you know, it, it, it feels fast yet too slow. Um, not slow. Um, empty is I think the better word. Mm, okay, yeah. um, it's got empty moments in it that I think that we miss, that we're lacking, or we feel, because the momentum in the second act just goes so fast. Yeah. With that being said, we bring Rita in, Emily Blunt, Tom Cruise. What are your thoughts? Dude, I just, I love these characters so much. I love that Tom Cruise is this, look, we're all used to Tom Cruise being, playing these characters, whether it's Ethan Hunt or in Oblivion, just, they have their act together, right? They know what they're doing. And I love that we're introduced to this character of Cage who is like literally like trying to get away with this, like I, is, I love willing, this. is willing to blackmail him and like confesses to the fact that like, I have no training. Like my, my PR agency like went under and I just happened to be in ROTC and here I am like. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I think that I think you're like the fact that he is not the hero, mm -hmm. like that he becomes a hero. Yeah, is is what's really great because we get so much of him failing and failing and failing and failing, and even in, towards the towards the end, he's still failing, and he's not a perfect. He's not a character that like has had to, like he's he's having to learn and grow and understand how to be an actual soldier, um, which I think is something that is is great and more importantly it is amplified with the help of rita being such the opposite the the you know they call her the angel of her done they call her you know the full metal the beam. Full metal. <laughs> <laughs> i think i love the fact that the guy it, oh my it's the full metal knocks him <laughs> knocks it out right there i love it um, but, but it's great to like, I, I love their dynamic, right? Because when he finally connects with her and she says, you know, come see me when you wake up, come see me. And, and we're in, we're shown that interaction of her doing that cool, um, plank. How many times did Emily Blunt have to do that plank? Uh, I bet you a <laughs> lot, dude. I, I know at one point, uh, I read on variety that, that like, I think the first time she put on the, uh, the suit, um, she was like doing something and she's like started to cry. And Tom Cruise like looks over at her and says, suck it up, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard about this. You're right. <laughs> and she like, in play, I was like, okay. And she like gets back, you know, she gets back to work. And it, this just, again, shows me just the level of like, just drive both of these actors have. These actors went through so much because th there were long shoot. There was like a long shoot period yeah. for this film, which mean and like having to do like similar takes over and over and over again to make this film the the way it is. I think just I can only imagine. And so having them, I, it just goes to show how much they still cared about wanting to make such a great film because they could have easily gotten tired. Yeah, uh, that's something I would love to like know as as the director or even like the the second unit director like how 
how is it filming? What's the structure of filming a time loop movie, right? Because not only traditionally, right, you may be doing five, eight, ten plus takes on just one regular uh, scene, but here we're revisiting these scenes multiple times. So, like, as as actors and performers, you must be getting exhausted, and now you're revisiting it because the script is asking you to revisit these scenes multiple times over and over again. Like, it's gotta be exhausting mentally. I I I don't know. I don't. I was I was thinking about this a lot because I'm like, because Groundhog Day is one thing, yeah, right. But this is a movie where they're trying to learn. He's trying to understand the rhythm of the battle of like the things. I think one thing that I, I I've I've loved is that they they used up they they were really great about using up a a scene, and then switching to like a new scene. Yeah. That provides the the next set of like oh this is I'm so I've lived this on a repeat. Yes, I'm, I I think that's something that stood out to me is that that there are times where we in the story are are we as viewers are advancing right in the story, um, and it's our first time, but for Tom and and for Cage and Rita, it could have been their fiftieth time, right? And and I love that we aren't told that until like minutes into that, right? Where it's like, oh, how many times have we been here? Even though it's our first time as viewers, for for them, they've been probably, this is their hundredth time that they've been at this farmhouse, right? And so like, I love that decision in the screenplay to do that, right? To to have me visualize a new a new point in the story for the first time, but it's not theirs. And so it, adds more to this gravity and, 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 and to this the depth of the toll that it's taking on on cage i think the other level of this is that they, they did a phenomenal job with you know with uh with cage's character and cruz's performance for cage where as he as he the longer he has to live the same day the the more i think the more grav, like the more like I'm trying to think of what. Okay, I think the pro example is this: like they, there's a level of authority or like ownership that they carry. Mm-hmm. We see this with the the first our introduction to uh, Rita's character as the angel of her done, and coming in as this like hero figure, and then how she is go she goes around with her squad in the first sequence, right? And we see her. Um, out in the field and like him his first like real personal interaction with her um and then as as cages per as he progresses through trying to figure things out you know i think one of my favorite moments or one of the things i think i, I appreciate is like when he's getting suited up in his jacket he's like have you done this like from going from where's the safety and him getting like <laughs> like freaking crap uh shit on for from his his co-workers <laughs> <laughs> uh where's the safety um to he's like why aren't you wearing a helmet and he's like oh, what, what is what it is, always gets in the way <laughs> <laughs> always gets in the way and then seeing the level of like this guy is like he's different yeah that is something that i like it's a small thing that i think really pays off as he develops the, the, as the character develops as he has to live this life over and over again do you do you like this dynamic between Rita and and uh, Cage, either as romantically or not romantically as friends? Whatever, like, what do you think of that dynamic? I so I appreciate their like I see a level of romanticism, but it's more of like you get to know someone so well that you just love them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what happened with you know with Cage. Cage is living the same day, and and she's having to like engage with him again for a new for the first time every single time, and then develop and like have to catch up and then like move forward little by little. Whereas he's been there, right? And I think, but I think what I see is I appreciate the level of respect that the both of them end up having for one one another. Yeah, that um, I appreciate Rita's like. Under her clear understanding, because she had lived seven years, 
<laughs> uh, you know, maybe more. Yeah. Be- because she had to figure out there. And then not only that, but have had to ended up having a situation where she had that taken away from her and knowing what the enemy's doing, having the responsibility to burden that by herself and knowing, knowing that she's like, I don't know if I can even make it. That has to be super just there's that's so much back like heavy weight and mental capacity that's taking up from them while still having to be out there fighting the front lines and being the like the the the, the exemplar person that cage had to promote through like to get people to shut sign up who also probably didn't have a lot of training and signed up oh, i'm gonna be able to do this and then complete are like killed because they have a they're fighting fighting this alien entity that can relive the day and reset to try to figure out and win the you know the battle no you're absolutely right i i i think also like the farmhouse scene it's some some of the best i think it's a really amazing scene it's a really amazing scene uh for many reasons one like it's it's a great break for the characters but also for us as the viewers because it's just been go 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 from from the start with this movie right and now we have a moment to like really sit in our feelings and their feelings and 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 again this is the first time that we are at the farmhouse but it's who knows how many times they've been at the farmhouse to the point where she asks uh how many times have we been here right and and he just says you know no matter what i do you always die here um and and it's just a moment i think also to like help build this relationship that they have of of this love that they have that they've been that he has been experiencing years with her but also hundreds of deaths that he has had to witness uh, of her and that's when like it really like sinks in at least for me as a viewer to be like oh this is this has been happening for a while and like yeah at some point it takes a toll on you to like not just see people die but like to see the one person that you are having any interaction die over and over and over and over again right or have them kill you over and over and over yeah. and over again that's true yeah so to me i what i love about the, the the farmhouse scene is that it's this other level of pivotal moment of like cage's character having to make a decision that um is causing him to have to say i cannot go forward with her yeah when they at, at a point where they think they have to go to this one location so that they can um, kill the Omega. Having this this s- scene that says, I'm going to leave her behind. I'm going to do this on my own. Feels so pivotal in, in, in a movie like this where he was become he became so dependent on her. Mm-hmm. And then he became so not only dependent, but like he, they care for attached, her, attached, yeah. you know, and the, and I think the sh- to a level she became attached to him in the sense of like knowing that he can do this thing and like wanting to get him there and like seeing like not seeing the work uh, the progress because she couldn't see the progress but she could feel a level of greater commitment or something right from this character which is again where i think this idea of like he was living again and again and having growing in in like like stature and <laughs> uh not physically but like in this like aura in this this um presence for this character right and i think for having this come out or having the, the moment of him saying no i'm gonna go do this and then finding out that like it's a trap it just is a beautiful like kind of closure to that to the toward for the end of the second act to open up to that third act yeah that really hones down like, okay, well, let's move forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is, I think, again, I think pacing, I think for the most part, this is a really amazingly paced film. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, I think it's just, it's just that third act, right? Uh, is it the third act or is it or, just or Paris? Just, or it might just be Paris. Yeah. Because the third act, then we, then we go into back into London and then it's um, Cage and, and Rita going to the general and who knows, again, our first time experience it as viewers, but it's their hundredth time going in and 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 it's never worked. And then he says something that finally sticks, right? I freaking love that. 
I, I love the, the uh, our first version of that yeah. going in. Him taking uh, Rita's arm and like dancing with her uh-huh. to try to get to the general's office, and getting to the general's office, and and then finally getting the like the thing for the first time and they leave the door and all of a sudden everyone's just like shooting guns at them <laughs> just waiting for them i love it um i all of that works great but it is the paris sequence i think it's just paris um is it because it's too dark is it because is it do you feel like we don't there's not a lot of like emotional not, not emotional but like dialogue that connects us to like what is happening greater like what what do you think it is that you find such a discount because i don't i don't necessarily i don't i didn't feel that when i was watching it this time or that i felt felt in the past i do understand the darkness thing i think this time i did notice i was like this feels a little dark but i do see why you might have a gripe with like a a struggle i think it's a couple things one it's definitely too dark um and i just can't see what's happening i don't know i'm you know we need to cross this field there's probably thousands hundreds of of mimics here how are we going to do that right so like it's dark and then even once they get in into the louvre like it continues to stay dark and then he's underwater and i just it's just kind of hard to see what's happening second um i love the decision to bring j squad in i agree but now you're you're trying to give me these emotional beats with J Squad when the entire movie, like we've seen him die and we've seen him just he interacts very casually with them just to like sneak away and go be with Rita. Yeah. Right? And so like for me, you know, when there's the two I don't even know their names. Like there's two of them that like sacrifice themselves uh and and, and distract the mimics towards them. Like it doesn't land for me. That's just me. Like I just I've spent a whole movie not really connecting with these characters, connecting with them on a on a comedic beat because, you know, we're going through the time loop. Right. But like, I have no emotional connection to them. So I, the thing that I thought was as a as you know when you brought first initially brought them, I'm like I I did like Jake Squad when I you know watching it and and I even the last watching it for this for this episode, is I enjoyed the J Squad moment. I did I did question at, through this watch. I was like, why not have Rita's team? Rita has a team that are elites. Where are they? Why are they not with him? Yeah. Um, that was like one thing that I, f- I felt like it was like a little bit of a WTF mate. Like, why are we not forced a bit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, because, I mean, even if they brought J Squad and Rita's team, that at least is like a couple, you know, maybe five additional men or men and women that could help out with, you know, causing bring cover or, or at least have someone that could last a little bit longer yeah um but i think it's like the emotion with like we had the most connection with the j squad so like i understand that 100%. um but I, I can see where that do you I, my, the one question is like do you feel that the ending with the omega him sh- getting shot or get, you know the explosion and then getting the blood of the omega and resetting like an entire day prior why is it why <laughs> how, is this, is this why <laughs> is this is this where you lose it i, I think that rush it, the ending is rushed and i think i think it's also like i, I don't know wh- yeah exactly why and this is why i said earlier in, in the episode the mechanics of the time travel here make no sense Okay, absolutely no sense. Like, why did he go back a whole day prior to what he was waking up and repeating? Right? And, and, like, so here's my theory. This is this please. is this is uh, Edge of Tomorrow's uh, Gospel according to Rubio. Uh, <laughs> so the the way I saw it was that like, okay, one, we already know that they were gonna they had found a, like a they were gonna ambush the aliens. But they get ambushed by them, right? That's when they get yeah. dropped on the beach. They find that they were being ambushed and that they were uh, like they were being they were being attacked. My the way I saw it is that like the alpha is the one that's battling this scenario, the scenario there, and that's the initial al- like the power or the blood that he gets, uh, he gets burned and like gets the, the specific power yeah. to reset the day, right? So he's in control now, and so he has the alpha, and the alpha is the one that's li- that was trying to figure out that specific battle. However, when he goes in and he ends up killing the Omega, the Omega already positioned itself in Paris a day prior and set up their their forces because they had gone and lived a portion of the day uh, and they were just trying to battle out the actual battle. So when he kills Omega, 
the Omega has reset to where they set their point to. Okay. And that's why he he relives that specific day. Yeah. Okay. That's my that's that's the way I look at it. Sure. <laughs> I just I'm, part of me is just like, why why didn't it just continue where it was? I don't know. Like I get it. You want your characters to live right and have a happy ending. Fine. Okay. But it's just like a whole day prior, and and he and once again he's the only one that remembers. She doesn't remember anything. I just kind of was like, and they don't even talk to each other at the end. I was just kind of like. Ugh. I don't know. True story. It just, it just, it, I, I, I feel like they didn't know how to end it. I mean, how do you end this? I mean, I think this is why this movie is intriguing. And like, I know there's like tons of rumors, even recently, that says like there is going to be a second one. They've been wanting to get a, psych- a sequel for this for years, but it's, it, it's performance does not warrant a sequel. And I have a couple of theories for, as to why this didn't perform well. My more logical theory is one, they spend way too much money. Like it's expensive. This 180 million is what I said it was. Yeah, I believe so. And that's not including again, usually it never includes uh marketing. But this movie was again supposed to be called uh All You Need Is Kill, like just like the novel, and then it was changed to Edge of Tomorrow. But then it always had the tagline of live, die, repeat. And then Literally, like, weeks before, or, or might have been right after. Then they changed the title to Live, Die, Repeat. Okay. I think this is I think and this then, is where I kind of learned. learned are you right. I remember this fiasco. And so then, like, to the, the casual viewer, they're confused as to, like, what? so what's this movie? What is happening? And then and then finally, like, in its full release on digital and, and, and DVD, it carried both titles. Edge of Tomorrow, parentheses, live that repeat. And so, like, you, they blew their marketing money out of the, like, it's just ridiculous to, like, go through all these different retitles and rebrands. Um, and then, so, that's why this movie did not make the money they needed to. But my other theory is that, <laughs> is I have a theory that ever since Tom Cruise shifted away from being the 90s heartthrob Jerry Maguire persona and then his true colors. I'm, I'm looking around because I'm afraid Scientology is listening. Okay. <laughs> just, I, you are. You went. You went I you, literally just went like Scientology here. <laughs> I am so scared of them. Um, <laughs> you, have you had a run in with them? Are you, are you just, are you secretly on, is your Marshall, is Marshall your real name? <laughs> I've been blacklisted. No. Um, but, but ever since, you know, a whole... You're still, he's still looking for his shoulder. I am still, like, yeah, a like, little I'll concerned. I'll look over here. You, you just keep talking. <laughs> uh, but ever since the whole marriage and the divorce and Scientology, he has shifted his brand and persona. Um, but my belief is any movie since then that Tom Cruise is has a romantic co-lead with him, they all tank. Interesting. So you think it's a conspiracy? So, is this our first conspiracy on the pod? <laughs> this is my my conspiracy slash theory. This movie, that kiss, I did not like the kiss. Okay, it was forced. Forced, yes. Okay? Um, so that romantic aspect to it didn't work for me. But also, if, it was like a tough like she she's gonna go die. So like yeah, there's that. Yeah, and I'll take it. Like let's just give each other a kiss. But then like the mummy, the movie, the mummy that he did. That one tanked. Also, he had that romantic lead. You're right. Okay. 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 Um, the most, l- the latest Mission Impossible, okay, Dead Reckoning, where they really dig into there's a, a love interest between him and uh, Elsa. Not Elsa. Wait, is it the girl? Yeah. Anyways, the like thief. Yeah. Um, what's her name? Il- Ilsa, Ilsa Faust. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and this is the this is the the Mission Impossible that didn't do perform as well as others. This is my theory. I just think that anytime Tom Cruise tries to be romantic with someone, his movies fail because of sci- the Scientologists. I just I just don't think we as as we as society ever since he did his whole 
Oprah freak out where he jumped on the couches and he was madly in love and then the horrible divorce and then the and then Scientology taking over his life and his daughter's life and etc like I just think ever I since think then he's shifted his he doesn't do rom-coms anymore he doesn't do like love movies and I and I think when he attempts to do that we as an audience are kind of like, Ew, you're and a creep, Tom. Like, because <laughs> he looks exactly the same. No, because he's just—I don't know—he's just creepy. Do you? Do you? Scientology's listening to this. I'm scared. I take it back. I'm sorry. Don't come at me. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. <laughs> the, the fact that you're like legit terrified that you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night. You're not gonna sleep tonight. You're gonna be like in the front of the door. <laughs> I feel like as as our podcast becomes more popular and this gets picked up under Scientology, they're going to be showing up at the door. Uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, well, we'll, we'll take we'll take measures. Okay, um, interesting. Good theory. That was a good time. That's that's my theory. We'll 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 keep our eyes out on more Tom Cruise love interest movies if there's ever any, because he doesn't do them anymore. We should create a, a subreddit where it's like Tom Cruise movies that tank that where he's love interest and. See, see if anyone else post 2007 post the divorce i'm telling you there's i mean a correlation there i could see that i mean we 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 as society kind of shun tom cruise for a bit because scientology the divorce it's just kind of weird fair enough okay i want to so if if there is a a a, a sequel what do you? What would you like to have? What would you? What would you like the sequel to have happen? Would it be another time loop? Well, that's what makes this movie great, right? Great, right? So, what's the scenario that causes them to have to do another time loop? <clears throat> um, yeah, that's hard because are are we to assume that he now has? Well, he got covered in the goo in the blood, so now is he repeating the same victory? Day after day, <laughs> like again, this is one of those weird things where, like, okay, so he because he killed an omega, and uh, the omega has the, they are the one that like have the full control, right? Yeah, the alphas are the ones that are trying to figure out, and they are the ones that will reset so mm -hmm. they can, you know, learn or whatever. Um, so maybe he, he's fine, and so he doesn't, and like he can, I don't know. It just the moment he dies is where he gets reset, uh, and then he has to figure out what, you know what causes it. I, you know, I, I'm not sure. That's I guess. I, I think this is the maybe this is the other issue why they haven't made a sequel. How do you capture the the charm or the fun of a time loop again? And how do you make yeah. it fun? Right? Like, how do you continue the story of this alien invasion? Because you could easily say, you know, this was the first group uh, of aliens to come out, right? And now that they've been defeated, you have a larger army coming out um, to conquer. And then, but then, like, how do you make it fun again? I, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know how I would approach this as a fun sequel, as another sequel. I was trying to think. I'm like, I wonder if if it's if I would do like if I would introduce some other new mechanic in in it with a new alien. Uh, of some kind, right? Um, but again, I'm kind of defeats the purpose of the the time loop situation. Um, like, you could, I guess, with with the concept of time, right, and space, maybe like teleportation. Yeah, I mean, there's you got teleportation. Yeah. You, I, I was thinking like freezing of time, um, or even like you, there's the like altering. Yeah, I don't know. Oh well, here, it, well, right now, uh, hot the uh, hot topic in movies is uh multi-dimensions right right this yeah what if what if every time he died it branched another dimension now this is getting too complicated yeah it is i don't know yeah that's probably where they're at they're like how do we make it how do we capitalize the same you know feel yeah in another you know movie series of some kind anyways i don't know how they do it i would love to see I'm one of the individuals. I'd love to see something happen um, again. I don't know if it'd have to be Tom Cruise. I would just. I would love to have Emily Blunt again. I would love just maybe. Maybe the next one is just Emily Blunt. That was the thought. My actual thought was like, would they just do instead of a, like Edge of Two Armor Two? It's just like 
it's Emily Bunt reliving her battle um, and trying to figure it out. Or give her the powers for the next stuff. Because I, I think she would be she would be a cool character to continue to explore and and see how she does with the time traveling. For sure. The time loop, yeah. Favorite scene? I just absolutely love the... I, I, I just love the first time at Heathrow. Um, I think, and I like it more maybe than like the bat than like the time uh, the first time out on the beach. Um, I love it just again. Bill Paxton coming in, you set the stage. You really take time uh, from a screenplay to really write out these interactions, these monologues and dialogues uh, that continue to pay, and you set them up and continue to pay uh, throughout the movie. It's just I I really really love just that first time at Heathrow. Um, it sets a perfect stage. It's fun. And it's just, again, seeing this version of a Tom Cruise, that's just kind of like, uh, no, I want to get out of here and whatever. Like, it's just, I love it. It's, it's really fun for me. I, I think I, I'd agree with you. Um, I think a good runner up, uh, for me, I think is the, 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 the montage, mm-hmm. um, of Rita and Cage trying to f- him get him trained and then f- trying to figure out. Her, the role of trying to get her and him to the end point. There's a lot that happens there. There's a lot of cool, great moments that like the repetitiveness, the like the precision, the like care is really cool. And I, I don't know, it's fun. Uh, but the overall like feeling and moment, I definitely think the first time he throw with Paxton, J crew, just him. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's something wrong with his suit. There's a dead guy <laughs> in it. There's a guy in it. Um, I will say there, there towards the end though, when he, he's trying to convince J squad that he knows that he's been reliving the, you know, the same day. And he's like, yeah, he even knows my teacher, my elementary school teacher's name. And w- under what circumstances throughout the day did you get to that information? Bro, he, on one, because he lived this day like seven, <laughs> eight years, then I'm trying to drive my point. <laughs> It could have been maybe maybe decades. I don't know. Okay. Okay. You got me on the I don't know. Sixty days, dude, I swear. Dude, come on. They're about they're about to die, dude. They're he four drinks and the guy's he's telling his life story, okay? Four drinks and the guy's telling He wears no pants in his freaking mech suit. <laughs> uh great movie. I love it. Uh it's fun to revisit this one. Um and we'll see if we ever get a sequel to it. Did you realize that this movie takes place in 2020? I don't think I realized that. Yeah, 2020. Wild. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we hope you enjoyed today's episode on Edge of Tomorrow. Please subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast, And if, don't forget to leave a review. It really helps us get discovered. More importantly, we want to hear from you. What did you think of The Edge of Tomorrow? Um, what did we miss? You can connect with us on YouTube at Real Chumps. Uh, to join the conversation, or feel free to email us at your at realchums.com. You can find me on Twitter at Marstrosity, M-A-R-C-T-R-O-S-I-T-Y. You can find me at Rubio underscore TV. Real quick note before we uh, talk about the next week's episode, just remind you that I was on the underrated podcast where we talk about Black Hat. Um, So if you haven't, I'll leave that link in the show notes so you can check that out after this episode. Uh, With that being said, join us next week as we discuss Interstellar with our special, a special guest for our 10 year anniversary on this film. I'm so excited to talk about Interstellar. Interstellar. This is the first time I revisit a Christopher Nolan movie post Oppenheimer. Oh, me too. I think this actually might be my second watch of Interstellar. Oh, really? Okay. I'm excited. We'll catch you guys next time.